Usually, when someone says, I'll do something that will make everyone remember me, they're talking about finding a cure for cancer or becoming an astronaut. However, in the case of Martin Bryant, it was mass murdering 35 people. His shooting spree came to be called the Port Arthur Massacre after the area where most of the murders took place. Bryant's sentence and no possibility of parole is the longest in Australia's history. Even a movie was made to showcase Bryant's eccentric life leading to the mass shooting event. Bryant was regarded as unusual in his childhood and in the early years of his schooling was diagnosed as having an IQ of 66, which is considered to indicate mental disability and put into special education classes. He was described by teachers as unusually detached from reality and as either unemotional or as expressing inappropriate emotions. He was apparently a disruptive and sometimes violent child and was severely bullied by other children. At the age of 14, he was given an air rifle by his father, Maurice Bryant, which he enjoyed using, frequently using it to shoot at traffic from a distance and allegedly to brutally kill a parrot. Bryant was referred for psychiatric treatment several times during his childhood. In 1984, a psychological evaluation by Dr. Eric Cunningham Dax described him as mentally retarded and stated that he had a personality disorder. Descriptions of Brian's behavior as a young man showed that he continued to be disturbed. When his father, who had taken early retirement to care for him, died in an apparent suicide, ambulance officers described Brian as quite excited by the search and unconcerned about the death. Bryant was eligible for disability pension due to his low IQ and lived on a pension for some years. He took on odd jobs as a handyman and gardener. One of these odd jobs led to him meeting Helen Harvey, heiress to a share in the Tattersall's lottery fortune. The two developed a bond, sometimes viewed upon as being more than a working relationship, with Helen taking Bryant out for shopping and spending thousands of dollars on him. Among the things purchased were more than 30 cars, all bought in less than three years. After Helen's mom, Hilza, died of poor health conditions from the house, Helen invited Bryant over to live with her. The two had then moved to live in the country at a small town called Copping. At this point, his behavior became alarmingly erratic. Despite this, Bryant lived happily under Helen's care, though their relationship was viewed negatively by other locals who had come to fear Bryant for his eccentric actions. Eventually, on October 20th, 1992, Helen died in a car accident. Bryant was named the sole beneficiary of Harvey's will and came into possession of a mansion in Hobart and other assets totaling more than half a million dollars. In 1993, his mother applied for and was granted a guardianship order placing Bryant's assets under the management of trustees. The order was based on evidence of Bryant's diminished intellectual capacity. Bryant traveled extensively both in Australia and internationally during this period, apparently seeking social contact with other travelers, but was frustrated at people's negative reactions to him. Bryant was becoming more and more erratic every passing year. What do you do when you have half a mil and nothing else to do? Go buy ammunition! So with his newfound wealth, Bryant began stockpiling guns. He bought an AR-10 semi-automatic rifle through a Tasmania newspaper ad. He also attempted to find an AR-15 rifle in several other gun shops. At some unspecified point, Bryant was finally able to legally purchase the AR-15, along with an L1A1 self-loading battle rifle and a USAS-12 automatic shotgun. He knew his guns. And on April 28, 1996, he did something that changed Australia forever. On March 13, 1996, just weeks prior to Bryant's massacre, a 43-year-old suspected pedophile living in the Scottish town of Dunblane named Thomas Hamilton opened fire at the Dunblane Primary School, killing 16 children and one teacher before committing suicide. Media coverage of the event was presumed to have been the trigger for Bryant to act. On April 28, 1996, 28-year-old Martin Bryant began a killing spree that ended in the deaths of 35 men, women, and children in the quiet town of Port Arthur in Tasmania, Australia. He began the day by killing an elderly couple who were the owners of Port Arthur's Seascape guesthouse. 
Some theorize that the killings were Brian's retaliation for the owners refusing to sell his father the guest house. Brian's father later died by suicide, which also has a plot twist. Bryant is said to have blamed the suicide on his depression over not being able to buy the property. After having lunch on the deck of the Broad Arrow Cafe located at the site of the historic Port Arthur prison colony, Bryant entered the restaurant, removed a Colt AR-15 rifle from his bag, and began shooting. After killing 22 people in rapid succession, Bryant left the restaurant for the parking lot, where he continued his shooting spree killing the drivers of two tour buses, some of their passengers, and a mother and her two small children, among others. One potential victim was spared because when Bryant pointed the gun at him, their eyes met. Bryant immediately recognized him as someone he'd been acquainted with before, and seemingly decided to let him live before moving on to continue the killings. On his way out of the parking lot, he shot four people in a BMW and drove the car to a nearby gas station, where he shot one woman and took a man hostage before driving back to the Seascape guest house. After an 18-hour standoff with police, Brian set the guest house on fire, ran outside, and was captured. He had apparently killed the hostage sometime earlier. During his trial, Bryant initially pleaded not guilty to all 35 murders charged against him but then changed his plea to guilty without providing a confession. He was found guilty of all charges and sentenced to 35 consecutive life sentences, one for each murder victim. To make an example out of Bryant and to make sure he stayed behind bars, he was given 1,035 additional years for attempting murder and inflicting grievous physical harm to numerous people. He was to spend his time at Hobart's Risden Prison, Bryant is notable for being the first killer to be sentenced without the possibility of parole, as most murder sentences allow parole after even long-term sentences. This crime story had such a huge impact on Australia that the country introduced several laws to ban many types of gun sales and uses, especially the sales of rifles. A movie called Nitram was even made on the life of Martin Bryant, which was directed by the famous Australian director Justin Cruzel who said that Brian's pre-murder existence has a stranger-than-fiction quality that would be worthy of a feature film treatment, even if the killings had never happened. It has been exactly 26 years since Martin Bryant brutally murdered 35 people in the deadliest mass shooting in Australia's history. But the story doesn't end there. New allegations detailed by former neighbors of Bryant have revealed the people tragically killed on April 28, 1996 might not have been his first victims. Helen Harvey's death was always believed to be an accident after the car she was driving with Bryant in the passenger seat crashed on a remote country road in Tasmania. However, friends of Harvey told reporters that she said she feared Bryant would one day kill her after his odd tendency to grab the steering wheel while she was driving created problems for her on the road. Barry Featherstone, one of Harvey's neighbors, said he had previously helped free her car from a ditch after Bryant pulled a similar stunt. Featherstone told police about three separate incidents where Bryant had grabbed Harvey's steering wheel. He said the elderly woman was notorious for driving slowly due to her fears Brian would grab the wheel. In another startling twist, Brian's father Maurice died less than a year after Harvey was killed in the car accident. A neighbor of the Bryants called police after discovering a note written in Maurice's handwriting pinned to the front door. Police called to the property to take part in the search for Maurice told Spotlight Martin asked out a policewoman who had been assisting in the investigation. Hours later, Martin watched on as police divers pulled Maurice's body from a dam on the property. Tied around his neck was his son Martin's diving belt, strung with heavy lead weights. His death was ruled a suicide by the coroner. Bryant, now aged 54, will spend the rest of his life in Tasmania's notorious Risden Prison. Tony Burley, a former Risden prison guard, said Bryant had an uneventful life in prison because he never has and never will be let out into the general population. Burley said, he wakes up, he goes to sleep, basically. Recent photos of Bryant showed the mass murderer had gained a lot of weight in prison. That's it for today. Did you like the video? Was Bryant's mental health the reason for the mass shooting? Let us know in the comments! And also, make sure to subscribe to this channel for your regular dose of whodunits. And don't forget to leave a like! 
watch some of our other videos. Stay safe, stay warm, and don't get any crazy ideas.